All right, everybody, I want to thank you so much for hitting the play button to listen to today's episode of Russell and Mudtooth here on the Radio Random Network. I also want to thank the sponsors of the show that help with production costs and hosting costs and pretty much help pay the bills to keep the show free for all of our listeners. And with that said, we're going to pay a couple of bills, and we're going to get this party started. Happy Friday. We'll see you on the other side. Are you a band in the Baton Rouge or surrounding areas in need of live sound? Look no further than Racket Sound, Lighting, and DJ Services. Racket Sound, Lighting, and DJ Services is big production on a musician's budget. Book Racket Sound, Lighting, and DJ Services today for your next big gig by contacting Louisiana musician Bob Toller at 225-773-4639. That's 225-773-4639. In the market to buy a new home? Or maybe you're wanting to put your home on the market. Contact real estate agent Tanya Halford. Tanya is a KDK Capital Regional Realty Partner and can assist you with all of your real estate needs. Contact Tanya today for your free consultation at 225-202-0657. This is Radio Random Network. Find us on the web at www.radiorandomnetwork.com. Ranked as one of iTunes' most popular podcasts. Considered to be entertaining, informative, and downright hilarious by their listeners. It's Friday, and you're listening to Russell and Mudtooth on Radio Random Network. Take it away, boys. All right, here we are. It's Friday. Hey, hey, hey. I'm hashtag RDM, Russell Devin McLean. And I'm Hash Brown Mud, too. And you're listening to a highly ranked <laughs> podcast on iTunes. Ranked 103 this week. That's pretty good, man. Yes, indeed. Out of how many? Uh, on in the it's the music category we ranked we was ranked one hundred three out of one hundred and fifty. Now overall iTunes that's what I'm talking 250, about two hundred and fifty thousand shows. I take one hundred and three out of two hundred fifty thousand in over a hundred languages. Yeah, and so that's why Sprechen Sie Czechoslovakian. Yeah, and I actually you know today whenever I found out we was on the what's hot. What's Hot List, which is a featured, your featured show on iTunes, basically. All right. Uh, and that's not music. That's overall. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I had to get on there and try to check the statistics so far. We got a lot of, we got a lot of people listening. It's kind of intimidating. I know, man. You told me it, it was upwards of 16,000? Something like that. So, And these people, like, like, around the world listening? Yeah. Like it might be somebody in, in Kazakhstan listening, or possibly might be somebody in Ireland or somewhere listening, or there maybe is, Australia. Yeah. There's there's many of them out there. I, Louisiana in overall United States, uh, we only have four hundred and seventy four of our Louisiana people listening to. That's crazy. So everybody else is from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Louisiana. Welcome to the Russell. I'll be the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that means goodbye. <laughs> I don't know. Don't get me start talking. Bienvenue. Well, we got our own language down here, you know. Yeah. We got that French. Mm-hmm. Well, well, different. Uh, I don't speak none of that. Do you think that's real French? What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's, it is. It's because uh, some of it is the same as like French French, and then some of it's different. Well, I mean, and in some words, like they'll say one word. In one place, like I say one word in Lafayette, it mean a whole something else like in uh, Ville Platte, and it mean a whole something else in like Pear Park. So you don't never know. So you got to watch out. You get yourself in trouble. Right. Like, I, you remember that old song, My Don't Mess My Toot Toot? Mm-hmm. And they go, Fe Passa. Yes. Well, my dad used to work with a guy, and he said that where he was from, that meant past the green beans. That's a, that's a okay. <laughs> He said, now, Take notes. I don't know why he'd be putting that in the song. but It right, sounds like a good time to I, I mean, yeah. I can see myself. I like green beans. Face hollering, Pass the green beans. <laughs> right. I like green beans. Yes, indeed. Well, we're no format this week. No, we're just kind of winging it. No interview. No, but I, I'm excited. Halloween. Night. I ain't going to spill the beans. It's going to take every bit of self-control I got. 
but y'all going to really want to be listening it's to the Halloween show. Turning in to the biggest show yet. Yeah, that we've ever done. And we, we've had Charlie Daniels on here. Right. But this is going to be, like, epic. This is going to be, yeah, this is going to be good. For all you horror movie folks, let me just say, this is going to be a famous villain talk to us. Well, he might be a hero to some. I, I guess you can look at it that way. Um, I mean, I, I always liked him, but. Yes, indeed. You know. But anyway, I ain't going to spill the beans, but. It's going to be a big show. You're going to want to be listening. Right now, uh, just to give it a little. I got a lot of stuff planned. A lot of stuff's going to be going on at night. But Yeah. Um, which the show will air on iTunes and, uh, you know, regular format, regular um, platforms uh, that Friday, which is October 30th. But mm-hmm. uh, thinking about maybe, uh, you know, the 28th, possibly. Doing a live show. Not. I, I'm not going to say yes yet. I'm not going to say no. We'll release more details on that soon. We're thinking about it. Thinking about it. Maybe get some people to call in, tell us some good ghost stories. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Tell a little story about a hook man and, yeah. and the dog under the bed. Yeah. Did you, now, <laughs> let me ask you something. Now, I mean, we are on the subject. When you were a kid, mm-hmm. did you have your, um, I guess, how, how would I say Did you have your residential boogeyman? That Why, your parents warned you about? Mine was Sack Billy. Sack Billy. Sack Billy was this old man, and he carried around a big old burlap sack with him. And if he was bad, he'd come get you and put you in that sack and take you off in the woods and eat you. And that's what my daddy told me. And when I tell you I was scared to death of Sack Billy, I mean, if I started acting up, he'd say, boy, daddy, like he'd look up like he's looking at like he heard something outside. It's just so real. You know, I'd say, what? He'd say, I thought I heard Sack Billy. He, I'd, whoop, 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 and I'd just get straight, you know. I mean, I don't want none of that. Mine was, and you're going to laugh, like Peter Crunker. Peter Crunker? <laughs> yes, sir. Peter <laughs> Crunker and he ate titties. <laughs> he ate titties? And I was a fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you. And Peter have, Crocker you and know, he ate titties. Back where I was, you know, where I'm raised, man, there ain't no, we didn't get trick-or-treaters or nothing, you know. We right. went down a long gravel road, and it was just us there. And, you know, usually around dark time, you'd go home or whatever. There wasn't no street lights. So it was dark. Right. You know, and I we was on our bikes one time, and I tripped and fell, and, you know, and I remember my brother, I think it was my brother Randall, hollering here come peter crocker and i just went nuts man <laughs> you know? i mean just think about it. i mean you're a kid you're a fat kid you got titties peter crocker eats titties i'm a goner because i got bigger my titties are bigger than everybody else we're hanging with oh peter crocker oh, yeah, I mean, that's a new one on me man i ain't ever heard that <laughs> and I hope, you know you talk about getting straight <laughs> we get straight to especially me you know but uh, it ain't like that no more. You can't do that to kids no more. No well, more. I tried. I tried to tell mine about Sack Billy, and she just she not having yeah, that's that. Not real dad. She don't believe that. No, it's not a cell phone app. Right. Yeah, she don't believe that. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you something. I absolutely believed it. Now let me tell you. I will tell you a true story while we're talking about you know scary things. Go ahead. I had. I was a kid. And I had just seen the first nightmare on Elm Street. So, of course, you know, Freddie, he had them, had them glove and them knives on it. Right. And he'd rake it down them pipes and it'd, wee, and it'd squeal like that. So the next morning, I woke up to the noise of something that sounded just like them knives <laughs> scratching on my window. Now, it's broad daylight. hmm You know. And I mean, it just, I said, oh, God, you know. And I laid there in that bed hoping it would go away, and it kept on, and it kept on. And finally, I got up enough courage, because the window was right behind my head. And I got up enough courage, and I mean, I jumped up out of that bed, and I snatched him blinds down, and it was a squirrel. Oh, come on. (laughs) He was scratching on my my window screen, and look. (laughs) 
<laughs> His eyes got big and wow, and he he ran. Yes, indeed. we scared each other. Yes, indeed. I was scared not too long ago. Oh, well, well, well on account of that snake. That's well, yeah, it's <laughs> funny you brought that up. Yes, that was the night we played Laguna. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, for those of you that don't know what he's talking about, and um, <laughs> my my fiance had seen uh, a snake on the porch. Right. And then uh, that same week, uh, a friend of ours, Derek Miller, got bitten. Right. All right. And so then that, that Saturday, uh, we were supposed to play Laguna. I was outside on the telephone, and, you know, it was, I don't know. I, was, I don't know how big it was. I mean, looking back on it now, it might not have been that big. But it looked big. And uh, I tore the porch up running. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked every piece of, piece of lattice <laughs> off the porch trying to get inside. But, um, yes, I hate snakes. But, no, I uh, played one Halloween night. And, man, I, I scared the shit out of me on the way home. I was just almost pissed on myself. And I swore to God I'd never ride with Russell Walker to any gig <laughs> ever again. I'd never let him drive again. No, I'm just kidding. Shout out to Russell Walker. I think he's listening to us now. Oh, yeah, well, that's good. I thought maybe you had seen the Booger Man. No, I've never seen the Booger Man. I've been threatened with the Booger Man. I, I've seen some boogers walking now. I I have only I've only seen one thing in my life that I really couldn't explain. Oh, really? Yeah, I've seen one thing, and that was uh, I was 15 years old. And the little town I grew up in, man, it was, you know, what, maybe two red lights. and Y'all had red lights. Yeah, we had two red lights. That. There wasn't nothing going on. I come home about 10 o'clock, you know, and shut the door and got in bed. And I hadn't gotten my eyes closed good yet. And it felt like something kind of just bumped in. You know, like if you're walking by and you catch a corner of the bed, kind of bumps it, you know. And I opened my eyes and... Over my head, I saw what appeared to be mm. a woman's face whom I did not recognize. Mm. And it's like she was laughing, but she wasn't making no sound. That's weird. And, Russell, when I tell you, I unassed that bed. <laughs> yeah. Now, my mom and dad's room was right across the hall. I don't think I touched the floor till I got in their room. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> dead. Dead, dead. And he said, what? And I told him what happened. He said, get your ass back in that <laughs> yeah. bed. Yeah. Scared to death. Now, I never saw nothing like that again. No time. And I'm a pro- look, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't drinking that night, and I never did fool no dope. Right, right. You know, I just, I don't know what it was. But that's what I saw. I, mean, I don't know if I dreamed it or what, but I'm telling you that's what it looked like to me. <laughs> I've never really seen anything. I've heard a lot of stories. Never really had that. Uh, well, I I take that back. Oh, yeah? As we sit in here. You know, Tanya and I first moved in together. There were some things happening that just you can't explain it. I mean. Some things in the world a, you just can't explain. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe. Charlie, I don't believe in all that crap. Honestly, I don't. I mean, I, my I, daddy I, don't. I absolutely don't. You know, I, I think it's for the birds. He'll tell you you full of bunk, you know. He... But I will say this, and this is all happened within a, it was a week, a whole week of shit just happening. Mm-hmm. You know, first and foremost, uh, it started with me. I, I went I went and caught the boat. I was working offshore. I went and caught the boat, working on the river, river rather. And uh, every time I would get out there, you know, I'd get situated on the boat and everything. I'd call Tanya. Well, that day I called, it just went straight to morning. That morning, it went straight to voicemail. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was on the voicemail. And I said, what the hell? So I thought I dialed the wrong number. That's what it said? That's what it said. Was it her voice or what? No. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So I called it back and it did the same thing. And that time I left a message, you know, uh-huh. and I got kind of worried, you know, Jody's at home, you know, uh-huh. things start going through your head and everything. Well, she called and she, t- you know, 
at that time we were still honeymooning, so I didn't want to be like, hey, you know, who the hell was at the house left voicemail? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so, uh, and she said, you know, somebody changed my voicemail. My voicemail got changed. And people been calling. I said something about the light in the kitchen was kept going on and off, and she disconnected it. So anyway, everything was all right, and I got home, got the kids. And I'll never forget, it was my me and my youngest daughter, and at the time she was about three years old. And uh, I was in the back, I don't remember if I was folding clothes, putting up clothes, I don't remember, I was in the bedroom, and she was wandering around, you know, doing what kids do. All of a sudden, I heard her talking mm-hmm. with Javerin, you know, and I happened to look down the hallway there, and she was walking, and she had her hand raised like she was holding somebody's hand, and I swear to God, she was looking up saying, no, that's my daddy's wallet. <laughs> and I looked down that hallway and I seen and I hollered, you know, because it kind of sounds like, who the hell is she talking to? Right. So I hollered, you know, hey, get back here. You know, what you doing? Who are you talking to? And she jabbered some shit off. I couldn't understand what she said. But mm-hmm. Somebody, I mean, she, whatever, you know, and she never could name a name who she was talking to. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe she did, and I didn't understand her. I don't know. But um, fast forward to the, I think that night, Everybody sitting around there, and the radio just goes off by itself. Just starts playing like mm-hmm. on a, you know, it, it was just weird. And, and things have happened since then, but we've learned to just overlook them. Now, oldest, uh, my stepdaughter, she's named whatever this the spirit or whatever it is, Toby. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the shower was leaking, and. The, I just hollered in there, you know, just messing around with the kids. And she said, Toby, stop playing with the water. The damn shower quit leaking. <laughs> well, I, I, I swear to God, I swear to God that on my life. And, and you can ask you Tom. You might have your handyman. And uh, I don't know. I, he must, Apparently he was a thief because he's about to take off my damn well, wallet. I don't know. You got say something. But uh, I, that's about the only experience I've had. I've heard many things. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you what. You and Brett Harrington scared the hell out of me one night. I was talking a while ago about leaving a gig. And I was, <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, Nightcrawlers. You, you guys right? had Nightcrawlers, man, you and Brett. Y'all was at, uh, y'all was at Wheaties. Okay. And all right, I showed up. And uh, I was hanging out with the band. And at the end of the night, everybody was hanging out outside. And you and Brett were talking about these tragedies in Louisiana. And it was, you know, you guys were... I mean, Brett told a story, and I wish I could remember it. Something about a train derailing with some, some kind of weird animals and some shit. Oh, I was about the Chatterwall Monster and all that. Yeah. And look, I'm going to tell you what, Hoss. Coming up in the woods in Greensburg, going back to LaRonja, I was scared to death. Well, the story goes. Now, I don't really know why. I grew up. All right, folks, y'all don't know this. All right. There's a little town. It's not even really a town in uh in Pike, <laughs> in Pike County, Mississippi, called Chatterwall. C H A T A W A. I'm sure it's some kind of Indian word that means house trailer. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> oh boy! But anyway, we love you, Pike County. Uh, yeah. So the, I always heard tale of the Chatterwall monster. Now Chatterwall is kind of a spooky place. They got some spooky, spooky places in Chatterwall. There's an old convent out there. That's uh actually I think now it's not even a, it's not a convent anymore. It's like a retirement home for nuns. Okay. Uh when they get old they can go out there. But they got like an old, old, old cemetery out there. And they got like a bridge that crosses the uh, uh the river out there and they used to have old post office out there. Just just creepy stuff. So anyway, old curvy roads and all, but I always heard tell of the Chatterwall Monster, and I never knew what it was. Like I, I don't know, like if it was like a Bigfoot kind of deal. I don't know if it's something walked on two legs or four, right, right, or what. But the story I always t- got told was back in the old days when they had circus trains, right. Whatever the Chatterwall Monster was was on the circus train, or the circus train derailed, and the Chatterwall Monster got out and. Settled in and around the Chattawall area mm. of Mississippi, and hence the name the Chattawall Monster. Now, they also said there's a little town kind of not too far from there, and I want to say it's in Walthall County, which is the next one over. Uh, a little town called Progress, 
Mississippi, and which is a big misnomer because they ain't nothing progressed there. <laughs> the biggest progression they've had Jim there. Walker home. Well, the biggest progression they've had there in the last fifty years is they took the stop sign out the middle of the road and put it on side road where it like everybody else does. Uh, you know, <laughs> they was a they was a four way stop in progress. All right, and that stop sign was in the middle of that intersection. There was a pole. I guess it was set into some concrete, and it had a stop sign on each side. And they finally got rid of that. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's the only progress that ever happened there, <laughs> as far as I know. But I could be wrong. Right, I'm right. I'm not the expert on the history of progress Mississippi. But anyway, uh, they said that uh, people always used to say that there was monkeys in the woods around progress. And they, if, what it was, then monkeys was on that same circus train and got out. And, but I never did. You know, I don't know. If that's Possibly. true or not, Possibly. you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, you're talking about that, the, the, the monsters and everything. Now, my grandpa was an avid coon hunter, mm-hmm. you know, and my brothers, both my brothers. Um, Robert, Let me ask you this. Did he, did he stay married to your grandma? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he went every single night. Because I'm going to tell you something. Time. For what I understand, I was a little bitty type. I man. ain't never met a whole bunch of coon hunters. That that coon hunted regular, right? That didn't get divorced. Well, I don't know why that is, but just say she, uh, she so good, good on him. Yeah, he they stayed together a long time. Matter of fact, going up to the day he died. But um, anyway, you know, I was a little feller. I, I don't remember a, a lot of this stuff. So this is just hearsay, and I'm sure if I'm wrong, I'm sure Robert or Randall or somebody will send me. My, my brothers will send me a text. Mm-hmm. Telling me I was wrong and I had to come back and you know this is just uh, you know hearsay but they go coon hunting one night and they over there I think I want to say it was around uh, Independence somewhere around what they call the fire tower mm-hmm. okay it just finished raining so yeah, I think it was my grandpa I want to say probably my two brothers a cousin and another fella and his kid you know and they go off into the woods there by the uh, you know, to go get the dogs mm-hmm. and just finish raining, they said. But uh, they go off through there, and all of a sudden, they come up on these tracks. And they wasn't just regular tracks. Mm-hmm. They were big old tracks. Right. He said one of them, you know, somebody there had a size 13 foot and stuck the boot in there and said it was, it was like, I don't know, like almost like six or seven inches bigger than what Good the boot God. was. And they said it had foam up around like where the toes would have been. That's what they said. Now, I don't know. He might have been pissing and walking at the same time. I don't mean. They said Bigfoot's a nasty thing. Yeah, well, he walked up on into the, uh, they said he walked, whatever it was, walked up into a uh, briar patch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and what was the funny part about it was my grandpa, you know, he wasn't packing a gun or nothing, but he, he had all, you know, them kids and then this other guy there, and he told him, he said, we're going to, I'm going to go to the truck and get the gun. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. And Bob Bolt said they beat him back to the truck. I bet they did. <laughs> but he, they said he was kind of a, he was kind of an asshole when it comes to scaring them. Though he'd get in the truck and I think they was over there at Briar Patch Cemetery one time, and you know he was telling them ghost stories or scaring them, and they was all sitting down in the cab of the truck and said the old coon dog come walking up there and he had his head down, so all you can see is the uh-huh. the body of the coon dog. And my grandpa said, damn, there's that headless dog. I've always <laughs> heard about it. You know? <laughs> so, so the dog just walking up there and he say, well, you know, the kids get to, cr- you know, well, let's go, Papa. <laughs> he said he took to it, going to crank the truck, and he said he didn't put his, uh, he just put his foot on the brake, didn't uh-huh. put it on the clutch. He said, God, he got us. He got us. <laughs> <laughs> And they said he didn't go nuts, you know. Well, you know that kind of stuff. But all right, there used to be a bridge out, and uh, had been in Washington Pay. Are you talking about? I'm talking Lee about road. I don't know what road it's on. All right, we found this thing, and we made up a story. All right, this was back when I was in high school. It was this bridge. Back then, it was a wooden bridge uh, that they had black topped over, but it didn't have, didn't have any sides on it. And it went over a pretty nice size creek. I mean, it wasn't a it wasn't a river, you mm-hmm. know. But I mean, it's a pretty nice size creek. But you wouldn't want to run off in there. And there was this tree 
on the side, on the, the far bank, and it had a limb that stuck out over that water. And we call that bridge Blackjack Bridge. Come on. You made it up. We made it up. And we said that they was this, uh, like they, it was a, you know, back in the old days of the clan and all that. And they hung this, this black guy out there and he put a curse on them, you know. And if you got out there, if you pulled your truck up on that bridge and you got out, everybody had to get out of the car. Right, right. You had to say blackjack three times. <laughs> and your car wouldn't crank. You know, and of course people say, oh, that's a bunch of bull. Well, come on then. Of course, well, you wouldn't go in the daytime. You go at mm, night. And look, it's spooky out there at night. It's dark. Wasn't nobody live right up in there. So uh, <laughs> we go and we. While everybody's getting out of the car, you know, we'd take, we'd like take the fuse that goes to the fuel pump. Out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get out there and everybody, black, jack, black, jack, black, jack. Oh, that's a bunch of horse crap, you know, and get back in there. That, that the car, car would crank. crank. And son, they went to, they went to our father and hail Mary. <laughs> and, oh, never Lord never help me, me, Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And I tell him, we got to push his car off the bridge. We got to get it. You got to get it all. You know what you had to do? You had to push it all the way across. You had to get back on solid ground before we'd crank. Now, can you imagine y'all out there doing that and some old poor fella come walking through there and. We would have all died. (laughs) We would have all died. If somebody actually would have showed up out there, we'd have all died. But we laughed about that, man. We had more good times doing that. And the tradition probably carried on. You should go out there Halloween night and see how many kids pull up and do yeah, that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody doing that anymore, but we used to, man. It was uh, great. I wonder in school, I wonder if the kids still do that. I mean, we did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in high school there, uh, I forget, it was over in Tickfall. They had a, a big hill and so, somebody died there or something. No. Know, a big yeah. store and you put the... You had to get baby powder to see the... Uh, oh, the hand prints. Yeah, we wasted about four bottle, bottles of baby powder. We didn't see no hand prints. Now, I tell you, there's a place out in St. Helena Parish up in the north end. I want to say it's on Lookout Road. All right, but it's, on the, it's on the north, the very north end of the parish. And you get down, it's it's like you in a little bottom. Now, I'm sure it's an optical illusion. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I've done it. You pull up out there, and you i mean, come to a dead stop. And it looks like you can go on. It looks like there's a little slight grade that you're going to be pointing uphill. And you put that car in neutral, and it'll roll up that hill. Come on. Now, I've seen that. Now, I'm sure that's, you know, it just looks that way. Right. But, you know, it'll spook you. I mean, it will, you know. We did that. Then they they had, called it Haunted Hill or something. Yeah. Yeah. They had the knock and grave. Yeah. And then they had. Um, they used to have the glow and grave and they meet. I never saw it. There. Yeah. That but was, now people don't got to where they put uh, little lights out by the grave, which I think is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, like my daddy always said, I ain't never been scared of the dark. Don't put no light out by my grave. No, no, no. You know. That's crazy. It's just weird. Them little yeah, solar yeah. lights, you know. Yeah. That's. I don't know. What is that? Is that like a. a I mean, you plan on going out there at night, reading the newspaper or something? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, not me, Jack. Not me. Okay, I don't want to go in there in the are. daytime, much less at night. Mm-mm. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. <laughs> you know, I ain't like this in here. You know, I don't, uh, there ain't much in this world I'm scared of, but I don't go in for them, you know, boogers and haints and all that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like all that. Well, I don't I mean, like dead folks. I don't like dead folk. Um, I tell you, I, <laughs> I went to a funeral. My great uncle died. Bless his old uncle sent it. And me and daddy went to the funeral up this. It was a great big funeral home up in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. They had like, like you could have like six funerals at one time in there. It's a big place. Really? That's a lot of dead folk. And, and well, what I do when I'm going to funeral home, as soon as I do the necessaries, you know, first thing I look for is the coffee pot. All right. So I went to the little coffee lounge and I was, you know. Enjoying a finger sandwich. Enjoying it. Well, I didn't even have no time, but I was drinking some coffee. And the way this place was, it was built into the side of the hill. And and on the back part, it kind of hung over. And that's where they would bring them in, down mm-hmm. at the bottom. Okay. So I look out the window. And I got an old boy. He's, he's wheeling one in, a dead one. 
on a, they laid on that bed, you know, on that, got the roly bed, you know. Oh, and yeah, gurney. And it's a black top parking lot, you know, and the sheets over him. I said, oh, my word, look at that, you know. And that old thing, he hit a bump or something, and oh, his old foot bumps that one. Oh, she was like, ah! Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh! No. Lord have mm-hmm. I don't like him dead folk. Nah, you just, you know, the funeral home thing, the funeral thing. I mean, we all going to go. We all got to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, I got a good friend of mine. I mean, that, that runs a funeral home. You know, I don't know how he does. always cold. No. I mean, uh, he's a big fella. Uh, he's a he big, tall fella. Uh, you know, I played football with him in high school. Uh, he's a good old, good old boy. I mean, really, uh, that's family business. You know, he's right. in it. That might be the last of the family businesses. I mean, because really, who wants to? I mean, if yeah, you just I'm, if you just I'm say, good. "Hey, you know, uh, you know, I ain't you know, I ain't never fooled with dead people, but I think I'd like to." I I got to worry about you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. If well, you didn't grow up around that, you know, I just, I got a concern. That's yeah, kind of weird. <laughs> kind of weird. I had an uncle that was a well. I guess he was a cousin more than an uncle. I don't know. Family tree. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't want to get into all that for a whole different podcast, but uh, his his hands was always cold. Mm. Shake his hand, hands cold, and he always wore jewelry. Yeah, did, did your friend wear jewelry? Mm, I mean, man, he wore a wedding ring, but I never known him to wear a bunch. Mm. I always wondered about that. I was like, now wonder, here's this guy. Wonder uncle. if he bought that or took that off of somebody. This guy's uncle was crazy because he was always being a big family, and uh, you'd see him. Somewhere and ask him, you know, how his business. He'd say dead and going in the hole, <laughs> you know. And uh, and a lot of times I'd see him there to like at the Sonic, and that, and he'd be in that van, and you know there's one in the back. Have you know? lunch, yeah. He's I said, you got one with you? Yeah, he didn't want nothing. <laughs> but, yeah, a little funeral home humor, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Herman Monster was a wait, wait, wait. he worked at the morgue, didn't he? Did he? I'm not I sure. I think he might have. Mm-hmm. I think he did. That sounds right. I just thought about the monsters when you said he's that. the only one. I, he's the only one of them that had a job. Yeah, Grandpa was a. Well, we call today, I guess, would be a, a meth cook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he he was a mad scientist. He was, you know. Uh, he may, and it bless his heart, his stuff never did work. Mm-hmm. You know, if he took the wolf pill, he's going to turn into a bat. And if he took the bat pill, he's going to turn into a, 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 a camel or something shit, you know. He I mean, made just, Eddie grow a beard. Yeah. And look, hey, all right, Frankenstein and a vampire, but their son is a werewolf. I'm sorry. I think somebody jumped the fence. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, Herman was Herman was a little bit of everybody. Yeah, but I think somebody jumped the fence. I Herman, think old Herman Lily got there. Look, don't get me wrong now. Lily was a fox back in her day. She was. And she All took right. some naughty pictures as Lily Monster. I don't know if you know that or not, but they're no. floating around. Yes. What? Are you serious? I'm serious as a heart oh, I'm Googling that. Now, she's, uh, God rest her soul, I think she died not too long ago. You but. know, she was in uh, the Ten Commandments. She played in a lot of movies. She played in a lot of. Um, she was. She was in a lot. Of, she McClintock was in McClintock. Yeah, uh, I'm John say, Wayne. With John Wayne. Uh, Yvonne De Carlo. Mm-hmm. Good looking woman. Yes. Um, even even as a dead woman. Yeah. She's a lot better looking than Morticia. Yeah. I don't like Morticia done something for me too. Yeah, she's a little too skinny. Yeah, but it's I don't know what it was. It was her eyes. Maybe or so. she'd look at you. Yeah, did, did they ever do an uh, episode of the monsters in the Adams family where they? Not that I'm aware of. Where they met? I don't think. Yeah. I think they stayed rivals until the bitter end. Three? Uh, was it three seasons? Four seasons? <laughs> I don't know. Uncle Fester, that was. Uh, oh, he's a kook. My favorite. I always like Gomez. Gomez was crazy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Cigar. He was. He was smooth. Be out there sharpening his fence post, and you know, I kind of course I like Lurch. You know, mm. right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, so you don't was, have was, good was shows Lurch, like that no more. Was Lurch supposed to be like a uh, like a Frankenstein? Well, I kind of, but he or just was, a ghoul. I think he was just a big fella. Okay, like a big old ghoulish fella. You know, he wasn't a straight up reanimated corpse. Mm-mm. You know, he looked like dead Frankenstein. Life, was. Yeah, it's just the way he was. Yes, indeed, and cousin it. 
Who is it? <laughs> And they say, well, it, you know, I mean, I don't know why, you know. <laughs> yeah, they talk to <laughs> Well, why don't you tell her what you feel about her? Yeah. You know, in I mean, the, <laughs> I don't know what he was saying. In the, in the movie, in, in the movies there, they made it with the Adams Family, you know, as a, I guess a, um, a remake or whatever yeah. you want to call it. He was actually, the, he was a preacher. Oh, yeah? Mm, he, he he was one, he married uh, Fester and Fester's uh, The good reverend. Cousin yeah. It. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. That's pretty funny. No, uh, he's something else. My favorite. I watched that uh, that movie. The movie. Those movies didn't do anything for me, man. I mean, it just it wasn't a real thing. Well, I okay. The movies kind of went back to where the Adams family came from, which was some cartoons, right? That guy, that guy named Adams, had drawn for the New Yorker magazine, and uh, there was some pretty dark stuff. You know, like say, like the. Uh, like the first scene where the people down at Christmas Carol and they all up on the roof about to dump the ball and all on them. And that was one of the cartoons. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know we can giggle about that, but it's just like, you know, you that's, say, well, damn, you know, it's kind of sick. You thought of that yourself? Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it, yeah, those, they were a little different. My know? favorite part of the movie though, is when Fester was having his bad, they was having Fester's uh, bachelor party. Mm. Do you remember that part when they rolled the big cake out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, an old gal was in it. Ta-da! Ta-da! I, my favorite part was the mamushka. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I, I just, I, I got to love the mamushka. That yeah, was with the baby, right? Was, no, the mamushka, where they was dancing, and they was throwing the knives around. Oh, Don't you oh, remember? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I got you. <laughs> 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 Yes, indeed. Yeah. Lurch, did you put the woman in before or after you baked the cake? Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> take that as a no. <laughs> but they all just laughed about it. Like, we're laughing. Yeah, about like, ah, oh, well, you, you know. know. There's another dead stripper. Yeah, it's a roasted woman inside <laughs> the cake. Ah, yeah. Yes, big deal. indeed. You know what? They, I'm glad they haven't because it, it, it I think it would ruin it, but they haven't. They've made remade different movies, you know, the Brady Bunch, which sucked. I watched it the other day, as a matter of fact, out of boredom. And the Adam Family thing, which Marshall, I didn't Marshall, care Marshall. for. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we have the Batman trilogies and, and a lot of, but they, even the Honeymooners, they made a Honeymooners. Yeah. Uh, they haven't made Sanford and Son, no. I don't, I don't know how you would do it. Who would play free? I don't know. The The closest thing I could come up with would maybe be that Cedric the Entertainer. I don't. Well, and the reason I say that is yeah. because do you remember that, the barbershop movies where he the, played the older fellow? Yes. Okay. It would have to be something like that. But there is no Red Fox. Okay. I mean, that, 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 that guy is gone, and I ain't seen well, him since. Okay. Well, according to hard copy, he's still among the living. He haunts his Las Vegas mansion. Well, I watched that on YouTube. You know, I, 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 well, you know, I mean, I, like, does he like throw pots and stuff? Yes, or? he is. He's a very mean spirit. Well, say, I don't want that. I want somebody, you know, and if you want to tell me a joke or something, I'm right. all for Because look, he was funny. He if, was nasty. If, too. if you ever, folks, if you ever come across some old Red Fox records. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's some funny stuff. My, my mom and daddy had one I, when I was little. And uh, they kept it. It was under the, it was, the damn record was under the bed. Uh, yeah. Well, you mean, listen well, to it well, I mean, it wasn't by itself. I mean, it was with a bunch of other records where they kept them. It was in a big box under the bed. But uh, I listened to it one time. I didn't know what in the hell he was talking about. You know, I thought it was pretty funny. You sound like a dude mad. Yeah. But later on, you know, I got it. But it was, uh, I mean, that, that guy's, you know, I ain't seen another comedian of will that be. ilk. I mean, I just, you know, I don't know. Those uh, the guys like Red Fox and then the guys like uh, Richard Pryor and then in that era, which Red Fox was a little bit before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he he come. I mean, Red before, Fox was before uh, Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor, but those guys told the truth. That's what got them over. Oh, yeah, and they wasn't really friendly in real life. You yeah. know, Richard Pryor was an asshole. Well, and he's a 
You know, and he told me. Yeah, that whole thing with the cocaine. Yeah, yeah. He liked the way it smelled. I never forgot that. <laughs> Boy, what you putting up your nose? <laughs> cocaine mama. Oh, Lord, take me now, Lord. You remember that part? Oh, yeah. I remember watching him. I remember my mom and my aunt watching it on TV. Just like you with the record. I was watching, right. you know, uh, the uh, Well, I like, VHS I, when I was, come along, it was Eddie Murphy Delirious. Mm-hmm. It was on a tape set tape and one of my friends had it and we wore that thing out now delirious was that the first one or the second one i think it was the first one and then when raw came out in the movie theaters i went i paid money at the theater i saw it at the theater five times five times i saw that Little uh, little fact though, you know Eddie. I mean, it was some funny stuff he talked about. But you Absolutely. know that was uh, he had a writer. He had writers. I don't doubt it. And one of his writers, Richard was, Brown, had a writer. I'm sure he did. Uh, Paul Mooney was one. Matter of fact, uh, if, if you watch some of the Chappelle show, he he would do some stuff on there. Like they'd say, uh, they had a little skit on there. Ask a black dude, you know, that's Paul Mooney, and uh, he's funny. As funny as he could be. Now, um, you know. All the white folks ain't gonna like it, and you got to take it for what it is. But um, he's funny. Yes, but, he is. But now Richard wrote his, you know, his own stuff too. But he also had help. Mm, right, right. Well, I, what I was getting to is with Eddie Murphy was one of his writers was actually one of the uh, Wayne's brothers. I think the oldest, oh, really? the oldest brother was a uh, that be Damon. Um, maybe so, Damon. I, Sounds right. He was a. Uh, it, which, know. if you watch, I think if you watch Raw at the end of it, the end credits, it mm-hmm. gives him credit for, uh, you know, being a writer for mm-hmm. uh, Eddie Murphy. And then, uh, but yeah, but you talk about, I mean, Rich, uh, uh, Richard Pryor, bro, I mean, you can't, some of that shit he said was the truth. You mm-hmm. can't make that up. Like, you know, he was talking about shooting a car. Yeah. That was real. Yeah. He said, well, Jack Daniels was writing for him that night he then. <laughs> Jack Daniels told him to shoot the shoot the tires. He said it'd be your uh, way. Yeah, yeah. eleven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, bring me back a paper. <laughs> what y'all doing? <laughs> Waiting on eleven thirty. We gonna pitch a bitch at eleven thirty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, indeed. Oh man, that was, he was. That's funny. classic stuff. Yeah, it was. Now they got what his name is. He's a loser. Dane Cook. I can't stand that dude. He's yeah. a sissy. He uh. He's. I've seen him in a couple of movies, and he's usually pretty good in those. But I don't. I don't know about his his stand up stuff. Now this guy Zach Galifianakis. Galifianakis. Yeah. Got off the hang. He's just stupid. Yeah, he's just weird. Mm. He's, he's strange. He's a strange cat. In real life, he's just he's out there. He's just weird. Mm-hmm. From comedians to sitcoms from the sixties and seventies to. Ghost stories. We've covered it all here tonight. Probably. Well, it's been kind of a, a a a wide spectrum. Yes, yes, a wide spectrum. If you have any ghost stories out there that you want to share with us, you can email me, Russell at radiorandomnetwork dot com, or you can email Mudtooth, and that's Mudtooth at radiorandomnetwork dot com, and you can let us know your ghost story. And if it's, it's good my, enough, we'll read my, it on the show. It's my email fix. Is it still down? It, well, it was. I will ago. fix it whenever we get home. Okay, good enough. We've had, I've had to, man, I'll tell you what, that website thing has whipped my ass. Let's go around. Huh. It's just, it's just certain things. Uh, you got to have. Um, what, the water pump go out or something? It pretty much. It's the best way I can explain it without getting goofy with it, but it's. Check uh, them it, points. <laughs> probably <laughs> it. Mm-mm. Yes, indeed. Wouldn't it be cool to have uh, Carl on the show? Oh yeah, maybe Carl can introduce us. Yeah, you know, I saw I saw Billy Bob Thornton. You remember that show in, inside the actor's studio? Yes, with James Upton, and I've seen and, it uh, too. And to watch him transform, transform right there in front of you. Now he turned into Carl, and it was weird. He didn't want to do it at first. No, he didn't. He really didn't, but he you know, he done figured out he's going to have to. They wasn't going to let him out of there without doing and it. He put his know? head down like it took him a second. Yeah. I mean, he had to get in that spot, you know, immediately. And then he had to he had to jut his old yeah, jaw he'd out there. Yeah, come up with his jaw and everything. It was... You know, when he kind of do his head like that <laughs> and just rub him hands together and say, mm. 
Daddy worked out the sawmill, down at the planer mill for an old man named Dixon. Mm, mm. <laughs> You know, we I did mean, parties and weddings, by the that's way. That's right. Yes, indeed. I'm I'm working on getting my minister license online. <laughs> so uh, me and me and Mudtooth will come marry you. That's right. And, and we don't care as long as you got uh, money. We don't get hung and up on nothing uh, else. Food. Right. Yeah. We appreciate something to eat. Yes, indeed. Traveling makes us a mite hungry. Mite hungry. So this week, no, no music. I'm not. Uh, we're not out. Oh, yeah, you're taking off? Not doing anything. I'll tell you what, last week it was a, uh, it was a Thursday a blur, night. blur, right? Thursday I night. several gigs. Friday night, I, we was off. It's twice Saturday and then one Sunday. And then my brother, Monday, I was dead. I went to the LSU game. No, oh, really? Saturday. And it turned out to be Steve Spurrier's last game. Come on. The old ball coach. I saw him coach his last one. I thought about, you know, I'm kind of tickled about that. you kind of tickled about yeah. it. Now, I who mean, is this guy exactly? Cause Steve right. Spurrier? Mm-hmm. Steve Spurrier was a, I believe he won a Heisman when he was in college back in Florida. And then he ended up coaching Florida a lot, for a lot of years. He uh, won uh, some championships there. Uh, Tebow played for him. Tim Tebow played for him. Uh, Danny Werfel played for him, I believe, who uh, ended up being uh, Saints quarterback. I mean, he didn't do that when he was there, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then he went to uh, South Carolina and was coaching there, and that's that's what the, he, he was universally known as the old ball coach. Hmm. I mean, he tricky. That song gun was tricky. Really? Oh, you had to watch him. He got he, he was always gonna try to fugaboo you somewhere. <laughs> Some way, <laughs> some my tooth right. right, you're right. But uh, but uh, LSU, you know, uh, Leonard Fournette ran, ran so hard that he retired. Really, <laughs> I did not get a. Uh, chance. I almost had us a gig out there for the uh, for this week uh, Saturday for the uh, the game. We, we almost had us a gig out there for a tailgating party. Oh yeah, yes, um, Mike Deaton. Had um, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Had some know. things happening, but then uh, I was let down. Yeah, well you know, it's all good. I'm on rest because next weekend I got Thursday night again there at the uh, our place in Central mm-hmm. Louisiana, which by the way has a uh, phenomenal lunch. They have a good lunch. I've been by there at lunch. T- uh, Tanya actually had some. Uh, I think what was the, uh, the j- jacked up shrimp. And the uh, the onion rings. I had a, I think a hamburger steak in there one time. Man, it was good. It was good. Well, needless to say, me and Steve Haney going to be there next Thursday night from 8 to 12. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to see me out of my, you know, out of the comfort zone, it just, it, that, that, you got well, to you see know, that. I, this uh, is, I did see. A little video on Facebook of you doing Into the Mystic, which is one of my favorite Van Morris. Yeah, it was fun. I don't know why we've never done it together. I don't know. We've uh, never. We've never done that. You know. Come on. No, we haven't. Uh, but I thought you did a fine job on it. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And now, you know, Steve, sometimes he gets a little x-ray. We can't show everything. Cause well, he, no, no, man. He, he yeah, he's pushes, a showman. Yeah, he pushes the envelope a little bit. He's just a tad, but I like it. Oh, yeah. And he does a great job. We did a lot of – but it, I was out of my – man, I'll tell you what, that first – when we first started, which I've been playing around with a lot of different songs, and uh, I got, I'm got i hooked on this Johnny Paycheck song. It's uh, 11 months, 29 days. Oh, are you hooked on that? I am hooked on it. So that's what we – you know, when he looked I, over – I just got me some stuff um, downloaded the other day. Some stuff I'd been hearing on uh, on XM satellite radio, Sirius XM. I got me some Delbert McClinton stuff, stuff that I hadn't heard. Delbert, huh? And uh, got some old guy Clark and just different things. But uh, that's some good stuff, man. You know, some stuff you know that would be worth taking ten minutes. And working up. Yeah. You know. We're going to have to get together. Yeah. And work it up. Yeah, we'll have to do that. But, uh, like, I, I was scared to death Thursday night. I ain't oh, going to 
I ain't gonna lie. I, I've never been, uh, you know, uh, you, you, every once in a while, when you first get on stage, you know, you're getting ready to go, you, I, I, I get some butterflies every now and then. Sure. I was That's legit, natural. like, the first, this is it, it's almost like, it reminded me of the very first time I ever played my guitar or but sang you had it for played anybody. in that place before. It, but it was different, no band. It was gonna be me. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's whenever, and Tanya said that's the best ever sounded as far as it, my vocals. It went over. I mean, oh, it went over. It was great. It was they cool. loved it. There you go. Yeah, we even hell we and even they did uh, back, so we even did uh, some old Mark Gray. You know Mark Gray yeah. from um, used to be with Exile back in the day, left side of the bed. You uh, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. You uh, they paid you. Oh, yes. Well, there you go. My manager now don't let me go out of the house unless I got the guarantee. Right. We'll That's why that. you don't see me playing with just anybody. <laughs> no offense to the people. I mean, you know who you are. <laughs> she had to go after them. I mean, and I tell them up front, like, don't, you know, don't lie to me. Mm-hmm. Because, it, and it ain't going to be between me and you. Because right. I'm going to be your friend. It's, it's you and her. Right. And she ain't nice. Mm-mm. You know, well, she's nice to an extent. You get to messing don't, with her money, it's like messing with her emotions. Right, Dad. you don't, don't dig in her pocket. Mm-mm. But next... Uh, I'm the same way. Don't dig in mine, neither. Yes, indeed. I got next Thursday. I got, before well, first and foremost, I got a field trip next Thursday with my my youngest daughter. And oh, then, yeah, where are you going? I think we're going to a pumpkin patch or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Then got Those a are fun. Got a boogie on back over. I know. I hope they have cupcakes. That's the first thing I thought about. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I like how you put those I two hope things they have together. Well, I, I mean, have cupcakes. They're, 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 they're pre-K kids. I mean, where are we going? Pet and Zoo? Hope they have cupcakes. Yeah. Punch and pie. <laughs> 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 and then you go, uh, I think, third, uh, Friday night. I don't know. Um, Laguna Beach Friday night with Mike Deaton and his Magnolia Fire. Oh, all right. Yes, indeed. It'd be a Steve Haney, uh, Eddie Williams thing. And then Saturday night, I'll be with LeBeau. And then Sunday, I'll be with Roadhouse. Yeah, LeBeau's going to be at uh, Boopaloo's. And then Sunday is at uh, is the Roadhouse Bandits at the Ditch Bar. And uh, I just love that place. You well, know, all right. Can't say enough about it. Matter of fact, I ain't going to say nothing else about it. <laughs> Then scenic mm. Springfield, Louisiana. Yes, indeed. So <clears throat> I'm gonna be uh, come that Monday. I'm I'm not gonna be worth a damn. Well, I ain't. I'm gonna miss the the ball game. It's it's my niece's birthday, and I, mm. and we're gonna have a birthday party, and I'm gonna cook. So go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna miss them. I'm gonna miss the LSU Florida game. Well, I'm gonna I, I say I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, you yeah, know, you just I won't just be. Gonna be there. Yeah. Well, um, but I am a family man. Never let it be said otherwise. So I tell you what, I have, I've, I've been pretty proud of myself. Not, I mean, I've always had to do with my youngins, but here lately we've been going pretty hard. Well, you got so many of them. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Walking got, hard. Right, I got, I got Dewey one. Cox. Yeah, I got one. You got about you know ten or fifteen. Mm, I have many of these. This is, Ain't that many? You got a, a what, what? What's commonly known as a parcel of youngins? Yes, <laughs> yes, but they're all good. Spent some time at the celebration station Sunday with oh, my yeah. oldest boy, and me and him had a blast killing dinosaurs at that uh, in the uh, um, Jurassic Park. And then he beat me at putt putt golf, and I didn't let him. He just beat me. All beat right. Me. Well, you know. Yes. And that's what it's all about. You know, it, it happens to the best of us, man. Yeah. You can't stay king of the mountain forever. So this week, the munchkins come over, and we're going to have us a time with Rocky the dog, who all has right. uh, who has became very hard-headed and spoiled all of a sudden. I can't imagine why. He likes treats, man. I just now Who don't? Tanya's on me all the time. I get a puppy a treat. I mean... What's your treat of choice? He likes, uh, and I, I, it's it's like sausages, and it's wrapped up in some kind of little thing. It's some mm-hmm. kind of, I think they call it sausages or something. What do like they taste that. like? I have no clue. Don't lie. It smells like play doh. <laughs> I know that much. But uh, you know, I used to hear him on TV. You know, this dog food is 
chewy and beefy tasting. And that's I, what he likes. I, I mean, like. but how do they know that? Well, he, somebody must have tasted it. I mean, you know, the dog didn't tell him. Mm-mm. Well, this is chewy and beefy. Right. Yeah. That's, they, somebody's been eating that dog food. No. The dog, he likes to sit by me, which he likes to sit by all of us. Mm. But he plays me, see, because a few times he'd rear up, you know, to get uh, you know to get by me. Mm-hmm. I'd reach down and he's 40 pounds, you know, he's not that big of a right. puppy, but I'd reach down and grab him and pick him up. Then when he goes to sit by the kids, he just, you know, he just jumps like wide open and mm-hmm. sit by them. But when he comes to sit by me, he rears up. I got to pick him up. It's something, man. You have to see it. He's a good dog, though. He don't like crack kids. I mean, he'll eat a crackhead up in a minute. Oh, yeah? He about, yes, and he's very strong. He's an old crack hound. He don't <laughs> like crackheads. And he don't like trains, and he don't like squirrels. And he will take off after a squirrel in a New York minute. Matter of fact, they had one today. Yeah, we need to bring him out in the woods. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. He, he, they had one today around that house there, and I was sitting outside with him. He was on his runner because I got him a runner set up in the backyard right. and get out and play, you know. But I got to keep him on the chain, though, because he'll get after somebody. But he... Uh, I don't want that. Mm-mm. I had to kill one. They did not mm-hmm. have to kill one of them crackheads. But uh, they uh, they had a squirrel around that house today, bro, and it it drove him crazy. He was he, he tangled himself up I don't know how many times. Oh, my word. He was on the porch. He'd look up, you know, like at the, at the roof, mm-hmm. and then he'd run around the other side. And he'd run around. He would just... It was kind of comical to watch, but it just yeah. We didn't get we didn't bring him out in the woods, man. I think he's got a little, you know, no, no, um, you know. They told us lab mix, but I think he got a little pit bull in him somewhere. Oh, you think? Oh, my brother, yes, he's very, very stubborn sometimes. Now he don't hurt nobody, you know. He ain't, mm-hmm. but he's got that temperamental thing going on with him where you know he will if he has to right and i watched him destroy a tennis ball the other day in like 3.5 seconds as well lord yes but it's enough about my children <laughs> and I, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sign off you want to tell him who's gonna be on the show no nah, let's no we're gonna wait. no i'll tell you what you don't tell him all right let's do it next week next week we'll we'll talk about it We'll talk about it next but Friday. But we're not going to tell you. But you, I'm going to tell you something. The Friday, the day before Halloween, you're going to want to make sure that you listen mm-hmm. to the show because it's going to be a good one. It is. Uh, I'm a, anybody that knows anything about me, Halloween is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite holidays because <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing in this world like scaring children. Or candy. I like candy. I like candy, too, but to just scare kids. Like, you know how, you remember those Scooby-Doo cartoons, like when Shaggy would get scared and he'd like, his, his feet would move, but he, wasn't go, <laughs> but he wasn't going nowhere. Right. I've made people do that. Really? People can actually do that. And I have made that happen. And it is funny, funny, funny. <laughs> you know, so we'll talk about, you know, stories like that and and different things, you know. If you got some ghost stories or Let something. Let us know. Yeah, I want to hear something good, man, because it takes a lot to scare me, and I, I want to hear some scary stuff. Oh, real quick, we're on uh, Twitter at Russ and Mud Tooth. Russ and Mud Show. Russ and Mud Show, yeah. My well, name yeah. is Mud. <laughs> and we're also on uh the, the Facebook. Y'all go give us a like on our Facebook page. It's uh, I think it's Russell and Mud Tooth Show. Yeah. There. Or maybe Mud Tooth. You can find it. Just search it. It's there. I promise you. You can just go to www.radiorandomnetwork.com. Don't forget about the Stitcher well. for all you Android folks out there. That's right. Um, iHeartRadio and um, iTunes. iTunes. Thank you for the ratings and review. Next week we're going Please. to read off the uh, the new ones that we got today and, and this week. And look, y'all, I just I want to say I'm humbled. Very much. So. Uh, I I had no idea that we had more than five people that listened to us. Uh, I thought it was just Randy Porter. And well, and and Hog Branch. Yeah. And, yes. Uh, um. But uh, you know what? I just it, it tickles me to death, and I just I don't know what to say. So, uh, but but thank y'all. It is. I mean, it's very humbling. I mean, it was a lot, it's a lot of work here to do this. It is. You know, it's not a um, not a. Well, no, I mean, anybody can do. I'm not going to sit here and, and BSing anybody. 
you know, they got a little sense to them. They could read, could do a podcast. But not just anybody can have a successful. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, you know, we got, you know, we got 16, syndicated audio. We got 16 something thousand people listening. Uh, yes. And that's, that's, and that's, a, uh, I apologize. We don't have all the stats in yet, but that's what we know so far. Yes. Yeah. And this ain't some kind of scam with the, you know, I see a lot of the guys. As a matter of fact, I've, 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 I've totally disowned guys that I made friends with. It's actually in this industry. They do the same thing we do. And they, they, everybody was going to the SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. And on the SoundCloud, I, we might get 20 lessons a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's generic. But the, the, these guys, you'd see like a 300,000. Mm-hmm. You can see, or you see like, uh, you know, just ungodly numbers. Mm-hmm. And it's not real. You, you know, they're lying about it. They're, they're, they're buying. You can actually buy SoundCloud plays. Well, I got a pretty good idea. This iTunes stuff is real, especially since we ain't spending no money and buying no kind of play. Well, first and foremost, Tanya got all the money. Second, right. I, yeah, you can't manipulate the I, iTunes Mm-mm. as I know of. And it's, it is a, it's a major accomplishment. And uh, my goal, or our goal, hell, we want to we want to break the top 30. Yeah. You know. So we're uh, going to get in there. It, certainly. If it keeps going like it's going. Yeah. And it's all because of you guys. We want to thank you all for listening. That's right. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, without y'all, we just a couple of dudes sitting in my dining room table talking. Talking shit. Right. Just just flapping our gums, you know. That's so, right. So, uh, you know, hey, it's always nice to. You know somebody's listening. Right. Engage. And, you know, hey, um, how about this? If now. I'll say this next couple of shows probably going to be kind of Halloween. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, if you got an idea for something we might want to talk about, or if you have a question or a comment or anything like that, uh, feel free to email those to us. And, Certainly. uh, you know, we'll take them under advisement. Might be something we talk about. Might not. Mm-hmm. That's what makes America great. I can do what the hell I want. Yes. I know sometimes we get them crazy ass, uh, we do have some Guess. strange, some strange folks that want us to interview them. Did you see the one with the with the ex Playboy Bunny that was like the bionic woman now because she got into a helicopter crash? Or yeah, something? I, I kind of I don't know if I want to talk to her on I the also phone. Got one I might want to meet her. <laughs> I also got one from a pirate. Yeah, a guy who said he was a pirate. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what to say. I'm still looking like, for. Is he like a her. Somali pirate? I'm not sure. Uh, cause I mean, I'm pretty sure he's not Captain Jack Sparrow. Mm-mm. And if he ain't Captain Jack Sparrow, I don't give a rat's ass. We get him all the time. Oh, yeah. Know. It's crazy. What about the sad ones we get sometimes? With the, you know, my mama was an alcoholic and I wrote a book about it. Well, yeah. I don't want to read your book. Yeah. I'm mean, asked depressing as hell. Yeah. Like we want to go get drunk. <laughs> yeah. We're going to sit know? here and drink a beer. Right. And read, by, by the way, I'm, I'm drinking a uh, blue moon and I'm having an angry orchard green apple hard side well i had one it is gone yes uh, very good this it was week. very nice uh we kind of got called out so that's what i had here at the house and well you know russ said he'd happen. take the blue moon so that's that's how it worked out yes indeed well rate review subscribe please share, do tell a friend tell your mama and them mm-hmm. yeah. tell your teacher yeah there's tell something for preacher. everybody here be sure and go back and listen to uh, Tuesday's uh, show, with uh, which is backstage with hashtag RDM. I'm talking to actor slash national recording artist Chris Mulkey. That dude's actually like pretty famous. Yeah, he's somebody. Like, I, would, I recognize him from his picture. Right, right. And we had just I said, actually, hey, I know that dude. We'd actually started watching Friday Night Lights on yeah. um, Netflix, and. Uh, we finally got to season two where he takes over as coach and he plays an asshole. And well, I, I mean, think it, just about every role he's ever been in, I've ever seen him in, he kind of played that. Yeah, kind of asshole hmm But with all that said, I'm hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. And you got the tooth here. <laughs> and we're going to be back next Friday. Well, I don't know. We might have a guest next week. I, I don't know. Hey, there's no telling. You're going to have to tune in. We just, you know. We got a we got a master plan here. I'm glad it's more like a rough outline. It's working. Whatever it is is working. That's right. And Randy, I do have the um 
I do have your CD at the house with the Leonard Skinner thing, by well, the way. You need to get that to him. Yes, yes. He will thoroughly enjoy it. He might even periscope it on uh, Facebook there. You never know. So everybody can enjoy it. Live stream. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, you see Jazzy's head pop up in front of it. The- there you go. TV, we're gone. Y'all, we'll see you next week. Bye. For more information about the hosts, guests, or our other weekly programs, visit RadioRandomNetwork.com. Join us next week for another entertaining episode of Russell and Mudtooth. Thanks for listening.